Have you heard people say community organizing before and wondering what the heck it means? Watch this video for my easy to understand definition of community organizing and you'll also get some helpful tips and tricks to make you a more effective community organizer. For the most awesome advice on activism, entrepreneurship, and the arts, make sure that you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you can get updated every time I post a new video every Tuesday. So right now, there's a lot of activity in the social justice field. You always are seeing petitions. You are always hearing about a rally or a different organization that's working to change some sort of injustice that is impacting different populations of people. You probably have heard the term community activist, community organizer, and especially with Obama, that's one of the things that he did in the past. And not too many people really understand what it was that he actually did. <laughs> By the end of this video, you will definitely have a more clear understanding of what community organizing is and some helpful tips and tricks to make you a more effective community organizer. I have taught this to several folks, from professionals to students, to artists and entrepreneurs, uh, because these skills are transferable. I have nine years experience, multiple victories. I'm an award-winning community organizer and activist, and I founded my own company uh, 2015, and we're still having an impact and, and running strong, thanks in large part to the skills that you are gonna learn by the end of this video. You may have heard the term activism used interchangeably with organizing or community organizing. Uh, that is actually incorrect. So we need to first understand the difference between the two terms before we dig into what community organizing is. So activism. Activism is the policy or action of using vigorous campaigning to bring about political or social change. In my last video, we talked about slacktivism and I also gave you guys some information on campaigning there will be more information coming in the future on my YouTube channel and in 2020 I will be launching my first online course to teach you guys the different transferable skills that you can use as an activist, an entrepreneur, or independent artist. The difference between activism and organizing is that organizing is to arrange systematically for united action, empower people to empower themselves, and challenge the balance of power. A lot of times when people talk about organizing, including myself when I give presentations, I always show the picture of the little fish and the big fish, right? So that's challenging the balance of power. We have to really understand what society we live in, even though we're uh, labeled as a democracy that is ran by the people, when you're challenging the, battle, the balance of power, you are usually giving power back to the people so that some sort of change can happen that positively impacts the lives of others. So that is the difference between community organizing and activism. And community organizing is mainly based in creating relationships, authentic relationships, building those relationships, and then being able to leverage those relationships and mobilize people to impact positive change. People can tell if you are only nice or act a certain way towards people who are powerful, right? So we all seen that person before, hopefully not in this work, where you know when they're around the average people, they act a certain way, and then someone that can write a check or like a legislator or somebody walks into the room and they're a completely different person, a way more pleasant person. So in order to be a good organizer, you're not one of those type of people. <laughs> The last point that enables you to build relationships and be a good organizer is that you don't judge people. You give everyone the benefit of the doubt and you work to understand why people act a certain way. The reason that that is so important is because, you know, this isn't like a game, <laughs> you know? So you're, you're working to create change in society that's going to impact a lot of people. You can't really be coming from a place of emotion um, and very reactive and wanting to see things change in a way that makes you feel better. Everybody is a culmination of their life experiences and the knowledge that they have taken in. And there are certain systems that dictate those experiences. So when you want to create change, you need to first understand the people. So instead of being like, we want to lock everyone up for 100 years who commits a crime, we want to understand why do people commit crimes? And then you work to address those root causes that actually creates a solution that better the lives of people, if that makes sense. But the best way that I can understand this is when I used to work at McDonald's and they, they used to say that, 
you know, you get you give everyone the benefit of the doubt. And I worked at a good McDonald's. These are very, very rare, right? So there's like, you give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I became a manager and it's like, you know, if someone calls out for the third time because they have to go to a funeral for their third grandmother, it's not your place to be like, you only have two grandmothers. Like, how do you have a third grandmother? You don't know what life they are living. They could be a child who has been through multiple marriages with a parent or something like that, or they could be the product of a close-knit community where they do have a community grandmother who helped raise them like a grandmother. This could definitely be their third grandmother that they're going to see be buried. So it's not your place to judge. You need to work to understand people. And then that allows you to build relationships which will make you a better community organizer. There's a whole skill set associated with building relationships and being an effective community organizer. And I'm going to leave a link down in the description to a checklist so that you guys can build your skills on your own time. Cause I don't want this video to run too long. But one thing I do want to talk about is one-to-one -one meetings. That is like the holy grail of community organizing. And what it is, is legitimately a one-to-one -one meeting where you sit down with someone and you talk and you learn about this person. All right, so you set up one-to-one -one meetings in the context of an organizing campaign, they are pretty goal oriented, even though it is authentic work and these are real people in real lives and you all build them real relationships. When you're having one-to-ones in the context of a campaign, since it's so goal driven and usually have a specific timeline and deadlines that you need to meet, the reason that you're having one-to-one -one meetings is to build, identify, then build leadership. So perfect example, is when I was building my first youth group that I, that I ever started. And it was made up of young people who were charged as adults. And I was really trying to find like who was gonna stand out and be um, a star of this group that can really put this on their shoulders and take it to the next level. And I had a one-to-one -one meeting with a young person who had just gotten out. And one of the things that we talked about was uh, his battle rap career. So I was like, you know, uh, you rap? He was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I rap too. Like, da, 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 da. And then I'm like, you know, what type of rap you do? He said, I do everything, but I'm a battle rapper. So I'm sitting there thinking, right, what skills are transferable and what skills does, do he bring to the table with the things that he, he is already doing? He already cares about the issue because this is a juvenile justice campaign. He's directly impacted. He already cares. He wants to make a difference. Okay, how can I plug him in as a leader? Right. So I asked him, like, you know, you remember your lines like, yeah, you perform on stage. Yeah. OK, that means that you would probably be a pu perfect public speaker and spokesperson if you just get the skills that are specific to this lane. Right. So that's what comes out of one to one meetings. And when you have a one to one meeting, it's not just a, a straight up conversation in the context of a campaign. Um, you are trying to identify leaders. And also, you're not really talking that much. Like, you're listening most of the time. Uh, the, the people lean on this, like, where it should be. Some people say 60-40, listening to talking, all the way up to 80-20, where, you know, you're listening 80% of the time and you're talking 20% of the time because you really want to build these relationships. There is a whole system and skill set to one-to-ones, the effective way to do them, and how you can utilize them not only as a community organizer, but to build network and learn people in whatever field that you're in. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description to another toolkit that you can use and implement that show you how to do the perfect one-to-ones, and this will brush up your uh, communication skills as well, which is also necessary for anything you wanna do in activism, entrepreneurship, or the arts. Now you understand what community organizing is and how it is different from activism. How are you gonna use this information and these skills to push forward whatever initiative or project that you have? If you like this video, make sure you like it, give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Leave a comment down below so we can talk more about this if you have any questions or you want to leave any feedback about the video. Definitely love hearing from you guys and appreciate you guys. Also, please sign up for my email list. There's a link in the description. In 2020, I will be launching my first online course that will teach you guys the intersecting skills of entrepreneurship, activism, and the arts. Please sign up for my email list so you can be the first ones to know when that course drops. And if you're early to the party, you will get specific discounts and perks. All right, take care, have an awesome day.